Welcome back to week three of our responder series. So this week we're focusing on the medical slash EMS career fields. And when I say that, a lot of what we're gonna go over is gonna pertain a little bit more to those working in a field setting. So whether that's EMTs or paramedics that are working on an ambulance, but that doesn't mean if you're in a hospital or administrative setting that you're not gonna be exposed to any of these things that we're gonna go over because chances are you probably are gonna see them. So first thing I wanna do anytime I look at a career field is what are the common movements that are happening there? And when we look at medical, the first one is gonna be obvious, it's gonna be lifting patients. So whether it's someone that's fallen in a nursing home or someone that's fallen in a hospital or someone you're preparing for transport out in the field, Lifting patients is just probably the most common um, on the job task that you're gonna see. Next one is bending over. So whether it's assessing or treating a patient, you're gonna get down on their level, which means you're probably gonna be in a, crun or a crouched over or hunched position because they're most likely gonna be either on a bed or in a chair or on the ground. Next one's number three and four, sitting, standing, and driving. So again, whether you're filling out reports or you're making your rounds or you're going from call to call around the city, just common patterns that we see in the career field. Now, the last one we have, we haven't seen this in past weeks. I kind of thought that was especially important that we include it in this week and it's mental focus. So I know this isn't a physical task, but again, whether you're assessing or treating, you're running through a series of steps in your head. And if you don't have that focus, then it certainly affects your job performance. And we'll go over a little bit more of this on Saturday when we try to simulate that mental focus in an actual physical workout. And it's pretty interesting, so make sure you guys tune into that. Once we have our common movements down, next thing we need to do is take a look at are these short-term high intensity or are these long-term lower intensity? And that's gonna determine the predominant energy system or pathway that we're using for this. So lifting patients, that's a quick movement, that's ATP or our initial energy system that we're gonna use. Bending over is more extended, so that's either gonna be glycolytic or oxidative, and then sitting, standing, and driving are all gonna be long-term, low-intensity movements, so those are classified as oxidative. With that, we go on to common injuries that we see in the career field. First one is gonna be lower back pain, so whether you're in a sitting, standing or driving position. It's probably gonna alter that posture at least somewhat from what you normally do. And that opens up that, again, that potential for lower back pain. And I also made a note on here with it is having proper shoe selection. Next one is chronic thoracic flexion. And this goes in line with those common patterns that we see of sitting, standing, and driving. So whether you're at your desk and you're texting or working on uh, the computer filling out reports or you're out in the field driving around a lot of times what we see is that those shoulders start to round and over time what this does is being in that position starts to lead to tight shoulders tight chest and then a muscular imbalance between my anterior and posterior sides last one on here is lifting injuries so again it's a big part of the job it's common movement if you don't have proper form and technique when you're lifting that patient or even equipment off the ground, then it really opens up that potential for some type of injury. Recommendations with all of this. Number one is to develop a strong posterior chain. So that poster, posterior chain is gonna be my backside of my lower back, my glutes, and then my hamstrings. And that's gonna help me, especially when it comes to these lifting movements. Um, and good ways for that to develop that posterior chain are gonna be doing compound movements such as deadlifts and squats. Number two, focus on core strength. Again, we're gonna be either in a bent over position or moving around all day. What better way to make sure that you keep that strong posture than by focusing on developing core strength. And then number three, going back to our shoes, is don't skip on shoes. Um, what I mean by that is don't just buy shoes online, especially if you know you're gonna be standing all day or running around. You don't, you don't want improper fitting shoes. Um, so go to a, a good source for this would be a, a local running store where they can do an assessment on your foot, get the actual size, and then the degree of your arch. And that's gonna be, it's gonna make your life a whole lot easier if you do that. Again, as compared to just going out and buying something online. 
taking a shot in the dark is if if it actually fits or not so that's everything for today again make sure you guys tune in on saturday where we go over a scenario based workout that's focused on medical and ems if you have family and friends and co-workers that are interested in fitness and they're first responders of course make sure you let them know about max fortitude fitness they can find us on facebook at max for or at facebook.com slash max fortitude fitness or on our website maxfortitudefitness.com which we have that brand new version coming out here this week so make sure you guys take a look at that and we'll see you guys saturday for our scenario based workout see you then